Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like you to turn, if you would, to Romans chapter 11. What we've been talking about is the Lord Jesus Christ with, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John during his earthly ministry, I guess a good place uh, to read would be, in, if you're in Romans chapter 11, go ahead and, and hold your place there and go to Romans 15 and look at verse 8 real quick. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. That, that's a great explanation. Where do we get that information from? The Apostle Paul. If you want to understand Israel's program, you need to understand Paul's epistles. Amen. Or you won't understand why it is that the Lord Jesus Christ had all these people sell all their possessions and their businesses, get ready to go into the tribulation period, if this dispensation of grace was going to be inserted and a 2,000 year period of time has lapsed when that generation was not going to pass until all those things of the prophetic program were fulfilled in the tribulation period and in the second coming. All those promises were to be, his kingdom was what? At hand. Well, well that wasn't an empty promise. He wasn't confused when he told these people to sell all your possessions, have all things in common, because you're about to go through this. There's a reason for that. God has the ability to be able to stand in the prophetic program and minister not seeing this interruption. He had the ability to do that. He had the ability to, to have the capacity to do all things, know all things, and not use that power. Can you imagine? I mean, he had the ability. They came in the garden to take him, and they, he said, who do you seek? Like, like he didn't know, you know. <laughs> We're coming for you. Are you the Jesus, the Christ? And, and he, what he, he says, I am. And they all fell backward. Now, can you imagine what he could have done just with his thoughts in anger? They, they would have been pillars of salt. You know, so many things could have happened. He, he didn't need 10,000 angels. He would take care of it immediately if he let his mind do what he had the capacity to do. He could walk on water. He could raise the dead. He could all these miracles but he was able, being God, to remember and think the program that he was in. As, and Israel had a legitimate offer, and that's what we're looking at. And he was, during the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he was the minister of the circumcision. Now, we talk about dispensational things to understand these seeming contradictions in the Bible. Why it is that the Lord Jesus Christ had these people sell everything they had and had all things in common. And then what happened? After he, the interruption of the prophetic program, these people that sold all things and had all things in common, they're starving because there was a great dearth. And all of a sudden, you know, they needed help. And the, uh, the Apostle Paul goes around the, the Gentile churches, the, the, the body of Christ, we're blessed with Israel's spiritual things. So Paul says, we're blessed with Israel's spiritual things. We need to bless them in these carnal things, raise some money and give them what they need in order to eat and survive to get through that. Now, if the Lord hadn't interrupted the program, having all things in common, they couldn't buy or sell during this time, the tribulation period. God was preparing them for that time. There's a reason that particular generation received the message they did from the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's a reason why the Apostle Paul's message is completely different than the message that the Lord Jesus Christ is preaching here. Christ gave revelation to the Apostle Paul to preach him according to the revelation of the mystery. This was the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ by the mouth of all God's holy prophets since the world began. So there's a prophetic program that is, has been revealed. It's, uh, God gives predictive uh, prophecy uh, and he tells them what's going to happen before the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ shows up way back here uh, hundreds of years before Christ shows up, it's all fulfilled exactly the way it was revealed. The only things that weren't fulfilled yet are the things that aren't going to happen until the prophetic program resumes over here after the rapture of the church, the body of Christ. And that pre-tribulation -tri rapture, it doesn't just, it's not one verse in Paul's epistles that reveals that that's what God's planning to do. It's multiple verses. You have to ignore so many verses 
to, to miss who the Apostle Paul is, to miss that this is a completely different program than the one, the prophetic program back here. In order to believe that, you have to ignore the Word of God's warnings over and over and over again. Signs that God put, you know, you, you remember the, the joke we used to, you know, we used to use uh, about 10, 20 years ago, here's your sign, you know, talking about the stupid things that people do, and then here's your sign to, to tell you what you shouldn't do, you know, that sort of thing. We have the, the, the signs in the Word of God that tell us this, Paul's our apostle today, Romans through Philemon, there's not just a happy accident that the, all those books in the Bible are in chronological order, Romans through Philemon, they're laid out in a in a design to establish each believer, if they would just read the scriptures, Romans through Philemon, they'd see that what they're being taught in churches so many times is so far off and away from the truth. Amen. And, you know, you can't blame God for that. What you have to do is blame yourself because you don't read His Word. And there's only one book that is, uh, has been preserved for us today that's based on the, uh, the original Greek of the New Testament, the original Greek text, and that's the King James Bible. Uh, it'd be a lot easier for you to understand God's Word if you read out of the King James Bible. And that's a choice. You don't have to study out of the other versions that all differ from the Greek text the King James Bible was translated from. Uh, but understand, when God has a message for the church today, the body of Christ, Satan hates that message. And there's more attack going on against the message uh, today, against what Paul was given, the revelation, the, the but now dispensation of grace that we live in. That's what Satan is opposing right now. He doesn't mind if you get all caught up in the Old Testament uh, scriptures and you, you put yourself under the law program, Israel's program in time past, and, and believe in the performance program of the law and, and, and say, that's not Israel, that's, that's America today. Satan doesn't mind if you do that all day long. He's not going to bother you a bit. But you get into Paul's epistles and you see, wait a minute, God's doing something different today than what I've been taught for years. And my... You know, this denomination I'm a part of, they, they consistently preach this one program, but, but then you start to see, this is so much different. How is it that they can be in one program, the denominational churches, preach the same doctrine over and over again and never have any more light, never have any more truth to reveal something else that they, they realized in the scriptures and come out of the darkness because there is no more light once you reject the truth of God's Word, and you willfully reject it by saying, I'm not going to, I know the scriptures say that Paul's our apostle today, but I'm not going to believe that. I'm going to stay in my tradition. That light from God's Word becomes lightning, and it will, it, your growth, spiritual growth will stop. And there's a reason for that, because you're resisting God the Holy Spirit in your life trying to open your eyes and lead you into truth. And where is comfort today? Where is strength? And it's, it's only in the Word of God, and you have to read it, let the Word of God be true, and, and let God be true and every man a liar. When, when there's So that was all introduction. I just want you to go with me now to Romans 11, and we're going to begin reading in verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away His people? What's the answer? God forbid. For I am, Paul's, Paul's explaining in Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11, why it is that all these people were told to sell all their business and, and belongings, why it is that the kingdom of heaven was preached by the Lord to be at hand, that this generation wouldn't pass until all those things were fulfilled. But all of a sudden, we don't have an apostle telling us the kingdom of heaven is at hand anymore. I mean, the Apostle Paul is not preaching the message Christ, Christ preached, that the kingdom of heaven is right here now. It, it's going to be set up in our day. All that the, was promised by the prophets back here about the Lord Jesus Christ reigning on the throne of David in Jerusalem, the Apostle Paul doesn't tell us today that that's, going to, that's at hand, just like the Lord taught His disciples. I mean, there's a different message. Paul's preaching to... Every man should, any man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Paul's teaching that we should all work to provide for our families and have enough to provide for others. 
Paul's not preaching, sell all that you have and get ready for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Could be here any moment. Instead, Paul is given revelation about the catching away of the church at the what we call the rapture, the catching away. First Thessalonians chapter four. We got a we have a different hope, don't we? So. Uh, but the question Paul's answering in Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11, I say then, hath God cast away his people? Is God finished with Israel? Is he done? Did he, did he say, okay, after the cross, you didn't repent, Israel's leaders, you're done. You're out. Now, from now on, the church body of Christ, all these things are going to be given to a spiritual Israel. You know, like they want to say. No, oh, it's not a, a, a literal nation. But it's a spiritual nation that God had in mind that he gave all these things to. It's not this literal, physical, Davidic, earthly kingdom back here that's, that he's going to bring out here. It's a spiritual kingdom. And that's what they do to try to deny the difference between Paul's writings and the rest of the New Testament. So Paul asks the question, is, has God cast away his people? Is God done with Israel? All those promises that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, all those prophets back there that wrote, given revelation by God about things that were going to be fulfilled out here. He's saying, has God cast away his people? God forbid. I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not... What the scriptures saith to Elias, Elijah is used as an example. We read this last week. How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone. He's the only, he's the last believer on earth. I am left alone, and they seek my life, all these unbelievers in Israel. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then, at this present time, why did Paul use, pull up uh, Elijah? Why did God, through Paul, give this illustration to help us understand what's going on with the nation of Israel today in the dispensation of grace? Because there was a time back here with Elijah that he thought that God was going to have to give up on Israel and, and change the program and, and forget about all the nation of Israel because none of them believe. None of them but him. And they want to kill him. And what did God say? No, there's actually 7,000 in the northern ten tribes of Israel we talk about. Uh, the, the two southern tribes, Benjamin and Judah, uh, are Judea. And the uh, northern tribes are Samaria. In those tribes... That prophet that God sent for those ten tribes was Elijah. And at the time that Elijah thought that they were in total apostasy and there wasn't a believer but him, the Lord said there are 7,000. Why? Because he says in verse 5, to understand what's going on now, even so at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. There is a believing remnant. There's a, the little flock of believers. The Lord Jesus Christ's ministry was very successful back here. He raised up thousands of followers, hundreds of, and thousands of followers. You remember all the feasts that he'd have, all the people were following him, and, he, and he'd ask them, what food do we have to feed the multitude? And he fed these multitudes. That was, there's a lot of people following him that believed. Now, did they crucify, the nation of Israel crucify their Messiah? Yes, they did. The religious leaders, you've read through your New Testament, you know that, that they hated him, resented him, they envied him, they, uh, they were threatened by him because they were ruling on a, a, a apostate form of Judaism. They twisted the law to try to prove Christ wasn't a believer in their law program. Christ gave the law through Moses on Sinai. He understood the law. But they try to trip him up and try to say he, he didn't believe the law. He wasn't submitting to the law program, right? During his earthly ministry, the Lord Jesus Christ had great success going to the normal, common, everyday people in the nation of Israel and offering them eternal life 
by faith alone. Okay? And what were they hearing? They heard all their, well, you don't need a Messiah to come and save you from your sins. We, got, we have the law, and the law will make us righteous. Just, you can be righteous just like the, those Pharisees were. If you just work harder every day at trying to keep the law, the God will accept you on the basis of your performance of the law. That was the program that Israel was using to bring themselves and others to hell. Okay, They rejected the Abraham, their father, believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. The Lord Jesus Christ preached, believe that I'm the Christ, the kingdom gospel, and you'll be saved. And, but there were, the Lord Jesus Christ's ministry was successful. I want you to understand, even after the cross, when the twelve gave testimony to his resurrection, there were thousands saved at different times. And so the, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ with the nation, the little flock, the remnant, had grown to thousands. There were great numbers. There was plenty of believers to walk into this kingdom and for the Lord to use them to set up and establish uh, his kingdom over here. Seven years after this, seven years of judgment and tribulation, he was going to set up that kingdom. It was fine. He had all the converts that he needed in order to do that. But what happened? God had another purpose in mind. We, uh, we use this chart to show that had the dispensation of grace not been revealed through Paul, another purpose that God had to raise up the church, the body of Christ, to accomplish another purpose that God has for the church, the body of Christ. The last 2,000 years, the, grow, the church has grown. I don't know how many untold millions of believers there are that are members of the body of Christ that God's going to use out here to reconcile the governments in the heavenly places with the church, the body of Christ. Until God revealed that information through Paul uh, when he interrupted Israel's prophetic program and said, I've got another purpose and plan in mind, and now I'm going to reveal it. And you'll see that I had in mind all along a way from the beginning, a way to replace the fallen angels who now occupy those positions in the heavenly places, those governmental positions. All the confusion we have in the world today because the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, is orchestrating using those fallen angels to help cause all the problems we have in our governments and in our world today. God's got a plan to solve all that, and it's the same plan you've heard in the scriptures all along that his the Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to he's going to judge his enemies the next time he's not coming in uh, to next time on a donkey uh, Jesus lowly Jesus meek and mild it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ on his white charger with the sword of the Word of God going out of his mouth he's going to uh, he doesn't need help to 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 annihilate his enemies they're going to be riding behind him on horses. They're his support. But he's going to take care of it for them. And with his, his spoken word, he, he can just take care of that issue. And he sets up his kingdom on the earth. It, the Lord Jesus, God is not worried about Satan and his armies. They are useful to him to accomplish the purpose of giving us his word and letting you choose. Which do you want to believe? The lie, Satan's lie program? Or do you want to believe the truth of God that he's given to you and preserved so that you have it in your hands? And, and we know what the answer to that question is. So reading down here, God forbid, uh, he says, I'm, he says uh, in verse 2, God had not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Know you not what the scriptures say of Elijah, how he maketh intercession against Israel. And he said, Lord, they've killed your prophets, they've digged down your altars, and I'm left alone, and they seek my life. So he says, he tells them about the 7,000 haven't bowed, bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Verse 5 tells us, even so then at this present time, there's also a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. And then he asked the question, what then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. This right here. Israel hasn't obtained the promised kingdom that God said was at hand during the Lord's earthly ministry. It was at hand, ready to go into it. I'm the king, I'm here to take you into my kingdom. To fulfill all those promises given to that nation. Especially the Abrahamic covenant. 
that uh, those that have the faith of their father Abraham will inherit the land as an everlasting possession, eternal life into the land. He says, verse 7, Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election, notice, the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So you have to remember here, who's the election? Verse 5, at this present time, there's a remnant according to the election of grace. That's these little flock of believers, the believing remnant. They have obtained it. In other words, they're, you remember uh, the Lord uh, told the, the story. It wasn't a parable. It was a true story. He said there was a rich man and there was Lazarus. And Lazarus lay at the rich man's gate and they both die, and the rich man is taken to torment, because he died in unbelief. But Lazarus, who died in faith, he was in Abraham's bosom, paradise, which was at that time in the center of the earth, in the nether world, the spiritual realm in the middle of the earth. Now where is Abraham and all those in his bosom, paradise? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says paradise is now in heaven. So we know that uh, several different passages we can go to that God, after the cross, paradise, that place where believers went when they died in the Old Testament, that was not torment. That's where the Lord went when he said it is finished. His cross work was finished on the cross. He didn't have to finish anything by some people want to say he went down to torment and hell and finished paying for our sins. That's blasphemy. He said it's finished. When it's finished, it's finished. But it says that he went down and, he's, and he preached to those in, in hell. You read the book of Jude. You read about that. He was in Abraham's bosom down there in the center of the earth until he was raised from the dead. And then he came up, revealed himself, and then he ascended into heaven and led captivity captive. They all went up, right? The paradise was taken up. He delivered them out of, uh, of that place. Because then he could reveal his purpose through the cross. Then he could reveal, and we read a lot of that in Paul's epistles. Uh, we also read about it in Hebrews. Israel got information from Hebrews that were given in the book of Romans. But he says here, Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So the, the point is, they're not Israel which are of Israel. Uh, remember when we read, uh, go back to Romans 9 uh, with me, and look at, Verse 6, you know, again, did God fail with his earthly ministry? Is, did God fail and say, that's it, with Israel, I'm done, now the body of Christ gets all Israel's stuff? Is that what God did? Verse, verse 6, Paul answers the question in chapter 9, Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So he starts to show what the children of promise are in contrast with the children of the flesh. And he makes a contrast here between Ishmael and Isaac. Two different Abraham, all Abraham's seed, but one is the promised uh, seed and the other is, is the children of his flesh, right? And so that's the same terminology, the flesh, Paul uses that term in, in Romans chapter 8, talking about we should walk in the Spirit, not after the flesh. We have an old sin nature as believers. If we walk after our flesh, we're not walking after the truth of God's Word. We're not believing and walking by faith in God's Word in our spiritual lives as believers. And we're not, instead, we'll let our old sin nature make the decision sometimes and walk after our flesh. Well, Israel, there's two divisions, there's two parts of Israel. There's Israel in the flesh, unbelieving apostate Israel that crucified their Messiah, that are running around here in the book of Acts, persecuting the apostle Paul, trying to kill him because he was preaching the Messiah, right? Satan always is attacking God's purpose and program throughout the scriptures. He attacked Israel, showed up in Genesis 3 with Adam and Eve usurps them, their authority becomes the prince of power of the air, takes over the authority over the earth. And all the way through this time, he's, he's attacked what God's doing and will continue until God deals with him uh, over here in the book of Revelation. He says here, uh, um, let, let's get back to Romans 11 here. I'm trying to get a little further than I am today. Uh, he says, uh, the election hath obtained it, 
the little flock, the believers, they've attained the, God's promises to them. They're in Abraham's bosom up in heaven. You, you can read about them uh, reading Revelation. You see that they're up there. The saints are up there with God. But the rest were blinded. Who was blinded? What part of Israel was blinded? I'm sorry. If you go back to chapter 9, I'll, I'll keep, uh, I need to read another verse back here. He says, Not as though the word of God of, hath, uh, in verse 6, hath taken none effect. God's accomplishing His purpose throughout the ages. Even with Elijah, there were 7,000 uh, that hadn't worshipped Baal. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. And that's, that's the main point we're trying to make. The Israel of God. Who is Israel? Who was the Lord ministering to in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? And the issue is He was ministering to the believers, those that had the faith of their father Abraham, that believed God's word to them in Israel. And then it says here in verse 7 of Romans 9, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So there's this believing remnant, right? So over in Romans 11, verse 7, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. You have a division there. The, the uh, Israel there, he's referring to Israel in the flesh. That apostate nation, God interrupted their prophetic program after the stoning of Stephen. You see this, uh, the Saul of Tarsus at the stoning of Stephen holding the coats of the young men that, that stoned Stephen. And then what's, what, in the next chapter, he's breathing out threatenings and slaughter. And then in chapter 9, he's on, he has letters from Jerusalem to carry away those people that were Jews, had scattered from the persecution, uh, that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, their Messiah, during part of the little flock, the believing remnant. He had letters to take them back to Jerusalem, compel them to blaspheme if they didn't put them to death. And God appears to them on that road to Damascus. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? God has a change in program here, right? So, the election hath obtained it, the rest were blinded. The apostate nation were blinded. Blinded in unbelief, blinded because they stumbled at that stumbling stone, Christ is their Messiah. They stayed in that same uh, mindset that they had crucified an imposter, and that now these followers uh, over here in this Acts period they're going to continue preaching them. And even though we crucified, cut the head off of the snake, now they're, they're going to keep proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ as Israel's Messiah and continue this, this heretical view. And we're going to have problems in the world because of those believers is what the problem is. And you hear some of that going on today about believers. The believers are the problem. They're the fly in the ointment of the world's, of Satan's system to run this world, right? We're the problem. But uh, so that nation is blinded. The Apostle Paul is explaining God set that nation. The national Israel was set aside. Right. They're reckoned among the nations. They're in this fallen spiritual state. You don't want to be spiritual Israel today because Israel is blinded. Israel's in this fallen condition. The election is up there, seated at the, in the, in the, there in paradise, which was moved from the heart of the earth up to heaven. They, have, they obtain the promises, the inheritance, but the rest are blinded. That apostate nation, now Paul's writing saying he has a desire to see that fallen apostate nation that's reckoned in unbelief with the Gentiles today. In the same condition as the rest of the nations of the world, God isn't esteeming them like He did in time past as that nation that He protected, that nation that He blessed, that nation that He was using to demonstrate His righteousness to the rest of the nations through. He's not using them in that capacity. They're reckoned among the nations in unbelief, but they all have the opportunity to get saved if they'll simply go from their blind condition about their Messiah and believe that He is the Christ who came to die to pay for the sins of all men, trust that Christ died for their sins and be saved. So the, the rest were blinded, verse 8, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare, and a trap and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back always. And then he asked the question, verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, 
what salvation is come unto the Gentiles. Why? For to provoke them, Israel, to jealousy. And we're out of time. We'll pick up there next time.